been practicing with the young Australian Corey Cadby. Mark McGinney only too well aware that he's got to raise his game if he's going to live with Durant here today. Tournament what average of just shy of 90 compares with Glenn Durant's of 98 and a half. If he's going to give him a match, he has to throw better than Matt McGinney, and he knows it, Paul. Yes, he does. The first start of McGinney is going to be key today. If he can get it in the bottom half of the treble 20 and he can build on that, he may be able to cause trouble for Glenn Durant. Check out, Glenn Durant has been slightly the superior there, although not a lot between them. But the nature of their games, Mark McGinney's had some battles to get here, notably in his first round match against Wolfie, which went to a sudden death leg with the scores locked. He's actually played 29 more legs than Glenn Durant. Effectively, he's played an extra match. Very well put, John. Will that have an effect on Mark McGinney? Interesting to see their facial expressions in the early part of this final to see how they're feeling. If we don't see anything, then they're very good poker players. There's got to be some nerves for both lads. Mark McGinney, Coventry born, now lives in Stockport with his fiancee Anne Marie, who became a grandma for the fourth time yesterday. The son Kyle and Liv. They had Liv had the baby boy yesterday. And I can tell you that Grandma Anne-Marie is absolutely made up about it. It could get better in the next few hours if Mark turns up and plays a really good game. But on 126, 57 there. Doesn't quite get there. So a good leave as Durant hasn't had the best start in leg one. No, unusual for him, but... When he hits the big numbers, he can really motor. Well, there's the treble. A little uh, raised eyebrow, as much as to say, hurrah, I've got one at last. McGinney looking to split this one. I think it's the right tactic. Double 16, which has been kind to him this week. Two hits. Very good indeed. 18 darts to start the final. That'll do. And a happy smile. Really boisterous crowd gave both players a huge welcome when they walked onto the stage. And it was lovely to see the two lads holding their arms aloft and with their hands linked. They know that this is very much a showpiece darting occasion. Easy finds. We've been seeing that smile all week long. Nine days of McGinney smiling. Who's going to be smiling when this is over? It's a race. First two, seven sets. That's a good smile, isn't it? What we're going to take into consideration as well, John, is Glenn Durant has played a match for this amount of money before. Mark McGinney hasn't. Is he thinking about the cash as well? Well, if he's true to his word, he said to me last night, the money, honestly, John, does not matter. I'm here proving a point that I can really play this game. Do you know he's, he was quoted by the bookies at 25 to 1 against before it started? Double BDO number one, and you could get 25 to 1 against him winning the tournament with Glenn Durant. Something like 11 to 10, 5 to 4, and he's really on a mission to say, look, they got it wrong, I really can play this game, and I'm going to show people. Yeah, all he needs is a little bit of motivation, and if that's it, use it. McGinney's had the better start here. He's been steady. It's a bit pedestrian from Durant, isn't it? Averaging 73 at this stage for a man who habitually clocks in averages close to the ton mark. He's on a finish, 88 required for the break of throw. Durant can do nothing about it, six darts from there. Pressure needs to be applied. And that is a very big finish left. I'd rather have 88 though, John. Well, I said six remaining, but maybe six, I suppose. 
Treble 17 for double 16. Well, treble 10 he could do with now, I would have thought. No, he's not. 40. He's left himself on 48, Mark McGee. Glenn Durrant, 167. That's good. Treble 19 now. No. So, McGinney with the chance of the break of throw. This is big for him. Yeah, it is. He miscounted in his head. He mouthed what he thought he had left. But it obviously wasn't loud enough for the referee to hear it. Double 16. Double 8 again. Yeah, very much similar to the first leg in the lower part of the double. And he'll take that. And now, throwing for the first set. It's not a sprint, of course. It's a long, long format, and there'll be twists and turns, I'm sure. But this is potentially the ideal start for Mark McGeady. Steady tons all the way, and he'll take some beating in this vital leg. Yeah, we've seen in previous finals just how they can go. More twists than a packet of knickknacks. Or twisties if you're from Australia. Corey Cadby, who's been practicing with Glenn Durrant, very talented young Australian player. It's not a bad sparring partner, is it? Not bad at all. Yeah, 2016 World Youth Champion. And he's off to Q School. Yeah, good luck to Corey on Thursday. Might have to just play one day if he wins on Thursday. Might have to go four days. Grueling stuff coming up this week. But right now we're focused on this final. Massive support for both players. 16. And they will hope that they can feed off that. Now Durrant with the opportunity perhaps to break back. You got a favourite Lakeside final, John? Cool, that's a big, uh, big ask, isn't it? Ted Hankey was in one or two. He's had some handy finals. Uh, Barney going back in time. I mean, I've got a, I've got a long memory. I go, I go back to, I go back to the great names of the, you know, the 80s. There've been some, there've been some fabulous matches. I have indeed. 92 was my favourite, but I also liked Adams against Nixon. What a great game. Yeah, that was, that was very special. Phil Nixon. Supposedly, when he was, what was he six 0 down? He went and uh, went and rammed some darts into his leg when they went off stage, as much as to say, "Come on, wake yourself up!" And turned out to be one of the greatest ever comebacks. With Wolfie eventually clinching it seven six. Yeah, old school stuff from Nixie. We miss him. Forty five. you require ninety seven. Right, can be done. Ninety seven. Tops now. A 14-dot leg, Glenn Durrant is into it. What would it do for the confidence of Durrant if he can take the first set from 2-0 down? To kick McGinney. Yeah. I mean, he'd be feeling he'd be feeling wretched if he lost it from two up. Word of the day, that, John. Wretched. Very descriptive. But Durrant can do that. It's a beautiful thing about set play sometimes. If you can put in a three-leg spell, especially when you're 2-0 down, you can really hurt your opponent. 100. Well, one of those horrible phrases, you know, it's sort of, it's never over till it's over, but it, 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 kind, of, it kind of sums this up, isn't, doesn't it? You've got to get over the winning line, and it's, it's not easy. 140. Well, one guy this week who knows that is Andy Bartons. Absolutely. Missed a lot of doubles to win his quarter-final, and he went home in tears. Unfortunately for the Belgian, but right now McGeady still looking for that first 180 of the final. Nothing between them. 261 apiece. But Durrant with the throw. If he takes this leg as he ought to, then McGeady will have the advantage of throwing first in the deciding leg. And that's not a finish for Durrant. 166. Durrant will be hoping that McGeady can't get two troubles but the adjustment is very good. 81. But he can't leave a finish, so six darts from 166 for Durant. Nine times out of ten, you take care of that. But this is the Lakeside final. It's not your regulation practice routine or game elsewhere. 98. Leaves himself on 68. McGinney just trying to apply the pressure. 
needs to hit the big numbers. Could do with the treble 19 here. 42. Well, it's a big advantage, Durham now. 60 the target. Single 16. For what he called yesterday in his winning interview, his favourite double, double 16. And that's a very good sign for him. Right down the southwest side of the board. And a perfect, perfect shot to put the pressure on McGinney, who was cruising a couple of legs ago. Right, well, now we'll see. This is really testing McGinney's mettle. Steady time to start, that'll do. Maybe. One thing we must tell the folks at home is that these guys, throughout their entire BDO season, play a lot of best of five leg darts. So they'll be in this position of two legs all, cutthroat darts all the time. So they'll be used to this kind of pressure, but again, it's ramped up. This is the first set of the Lakeside final, totally different. They've met twice, uh, they've met three times before in televised matches. Glenn Durrant has the advantage by two to one. That's the trophy they're playing for. Durrant filling up the double twenties. Dini on the darts, still just about has the advantage. This helps. That's a fine visit. Could have done with another one, but he's in a nice place. Uh -huh. I didn't think he was going to miss that 60 there. The way those darts were lying, they were perfect. And you can see the facial expression of McGinney as if to say, I can't believe it didn't go in. 60. But those three didn't go in, and that now leaves the advantage with McGinney for this first set. Moving towards it. Great first dart. Great second dart. 18 he wants now for tops. Oh, that is perfect. Literally perfect. Couldn't possibly have done any more. All Duran can do is hit a 180 and hope. Doesn't like the lie. He's going to have to push this one in with everything he's got. And it's there. Great darts from Duran. But McGinney now. Three darts at double top for the set. Great darts. That is an important moment for Mark McGinney.